You're watching Color 10 News at 10. While medical marijuana dispensaries are still tonight waiting to get licenses to sell, people are already lining up to get their medical marijuana card. Good evening once again to you. I'm David Oliver. And I'm Jennifer Abreu. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. A business called The Cannabis travels all across the state with a doctor on board to approve people for medical marijuana cards. Our Madison Heaver spoke with a doctor today about what this process is like. Madison. Jen, the cannabis was in Springfield today at a store called Cannabliss. While we weren't allowed inside the building, we did get to talk to the doctor and even one patient who showed up to get her medical marijuana card. I am here to get my medical marijuana card. The Cannabis, a traveling group that has a psychiatrist, certifies groups of people for medical marijuana cards. This is Dr. Xenia Thomas. As of today, October 7th, she's in good standing as a psychiatrist, and according to Missouri law, she has the authority to approve anyone she believes needs medical marijuana. So basically, the state of Missouri is giving the doctor the ultimate, uh, you know, authority to qualify for someone for the card or not. But the ways of her practice aren't what some may call conventional seeing groups of 10 to 20 people at a time. We take some screening tests, and uh, based on those, they would qualify for the card or not. Um, and if you qualify for the card, you kind of, I fill out the state form. And so once the doctor qualifies you, you are, you are legal. This is Jen. We met her before she went in to get approved. I unfortunately suffer from anxiety and panic disorder. Um, so it helps me with that. I'm not really sure what to expect. I expect to meet with a doctor and uh, discuss my ailments and uh, see if this is something that will help me with that. And she was inside for about 30 minutes. It went good. Uh, it was an easy process. Um, answer questions about your afflictions and uh, it was very informative. I got the paperwork um, and I registered online and the card will be here in seven business days. So if it's this easy to get a medical marijuana card, what's stopping someone from abusing the accessibility that the cannabis offers? PTSD or anxiety or depression or arthritis. As far as the answer of abuse, I don't, I don't personally really believe that that's a problem because I feel like almost everyone can fall in one of those categories. Cannabis owner Jamie Tillman told me over the phone that they approved 138 people for medical marijuana cards just today within seven hours. I think there's just a lot of scrutiny. I'm confident in what I uh, know and my knowledge and how I can kind of help, help people and believe this is the only way that you should really treat medicine. Now, there's been several investigations into the cannabis. Out of those investigations, there wasn't anything illegal that they were doing. No, Madison, I know there are a lot of questions about if there should be exam requirements for a doctor to be approving this. Yeah, well, we talked with the Department of Health and Senior Services, and they said there aren't any specific requirements of exams, only that there needs to be some sort of evaluation of each patient. All right, thanks, Madison. Now, here's some more information for you. Medical marijuana cards will look like this. So if you have been approved for a medical marijuana card, but you haven't yet gotten yours in the mail, you should know that the form your doctor signs is not a temporary card. According to the Department of Health and Senior Services, the state of Missouri does not issue temporary cards, so you have to wait for that card to come into the mail until dispensaries are able to sell as well to consume medical marijuana. And tonight, new at 10, a former Webster County judge has now been chosen as a hearing examiner during tonight's Springfield City Council meeting to determine whether Councilwoman Jan Fisk broke any laws concerning any connections between her role on the council and her family's business, Fisk Limousines. That former judge, Kenneth Thompson, will be tasked now with determining if Fisk filed proper financial statements during her time as a city council member. He will also determine if she had a conflict of interest regarding any city contracts and her business during her time there on the council. A hearing will be held to determine these questions posed by the other council members, but it's not clear yet tonight when that hearing might happen. Keeping crime in focus tonight, 
We begin with uh, we have some new information out of Aurora. Police say a man was shot this morning at the 300 block of West Locus. That's near the corner of Church and Roosevelt. The gunman, a 31 year old man, was arrested at the scene. The victim was not seriously hurt but was taken to the hospital. A local school was put on lockdown for a short time. The investigation is still ongoing. And around the region this Monday at 10, a manhunt is now intensifying up in Kansas City for one of two suspects in a deadly shooting at a crowd. Bar early Sunday morning. Police say Hugo Villanueva Morales is armed and dangerous. They announced the arrest of the second suspect, Javier Alatore, late last night. They're accused of killing four people and wounding five others inside the Tequila KC bar in Kansas City, Kansas. Dozens were at the community watering hole for a typical Saturday night when the scene turned deadly, including Michael Barajas, who was shot in the arm. I believe there was probably some targets in there. The way that he came in, just shooting like like uh, came in shooting, left a couple people dead, and then it looked like he just started swinging around everywhere. Horrifying! It was crazy. I never imagined nothing like that, and I wouldn't have wished it upon my worst enemy. And Barajas, you hear right from right there, was among the five people injured in that shooting. A bullet is still lodged inside his shoulder. In education coverage tonight, every year MSU's State of the University address includes the college's successes, things to improve on, and future plans. Our Francis Lynn attended the address this afternoon and tells us this year's focus is making college more accessible. MSU President Cliff Smart and Provost Frank Einhele were pleased to announce the university's success this past year. We had a winning debate team last year. Uh, a winning team in two business areas, financial analysis and uh, in cybersecurity. Uh, we've been designated as a professional doctorate university. President Smart specifically highlighted the decline in international students over the past few years. We all know there are fewer international students studying in the United States today, and that's a result of increased difficulty in obtaining visas, the trade tension. Uh, with China, where, where so many of, of our international students come from, a perceived uh, unwelcoming climate in America, the fear of gun violence here. And is proud to have gained those numbers back. We worked harder and we bent the curve back up, over 1,600 students. He says there are three main goals for this next year. Can we grow enrollment? Um, can we improve our first to second year retention rate? and really making college more accessible. We know that we have to work harder in, in advising so that our students have a clear pathway that they understand towards careers and so that we can help in the transfer student process uh, working in those areas. And he plans on engaging the whole MSU community to achieve those goals. Every employee, every student, no matter their political, political or religious views or lack thereof, should feel a part of the Missouri State University family. Francis Lynn Ozarks first. Now you can watch the entire State of the University address and the questions and answers after the address, and that link is on our website, OzarksFirst.com. And around the Ozarks now in the news at 10, and today teams unleash their golfing skills at Putt for Paws. A charity golf tournament for care. That's, of course, a local animal rescue. Tournament chair Etta Bates got the idea over a decade ago that she wanted to help animals in a big way. And after working it all out, how she would do that, she started Pud for Paws 12 years ago. Now she's excited that this tournament has raised more than $150,000 to support CARES operations. And she says days like today really make the tournament all that much the better. This is a perfect golf day. It's really the first real fall weather feeling day that we've had. As far as we're concerned, the sky is the limit. The more money we can raise, the more animals uh, care can rescue. And this year, 18 teams took part in that event. Various prizes were awarded for the tournament, including a car and some cash, too. Well, moving on to weather now, as we heard in that last story, a perfect day for golf and a nice day for anything outside, really. We have a couple more, but then it's going to get cold, right, Jamie? Yeah, Jennifer, we've got a storm that's going to move through Thursday into Friday, and that's going to be followed by even colder weather than we're currently experiencing. In fact, it may be cold enough for some patchy frost for parts of the Ozarks. I'll have more on that after the break.